Yes. He's on another one? Yeah. Okay. We're going to generate another one. It's, it's no worries. We can just send another one. Okay, wonderful. We're doing it literally as we speak. So thank you again. Okay, bye bye. <clears throat> Going to twenty seconds. Okay. Yeah, Mike is in. Oh yeah. Ten seconds. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all so much for tuning in to Fluent Radio. I am your host, Mr. Fluent himself. Uh, Perks. Mama, can you bring me some water? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Perks. <laughs> Perks. Okay. Thank y'all for tuning in to Fluent Radio. Y'all. I am your host, Mr. Fluent himself, y'all. Like, I am, I, I'm wearing my... <laughs> I'm wearing my Derrick Rose joints today, y'all, and I'm feeling That's good. Right here, that it, it is going to be a oh. it's going to be a dope, dope, dope show today, y'all. I am with my host, of course, the lovely Miss Shante McKinney, hey. and yes. we're doing our thing. Um, right now, y'all, we are we are about to uh, uh, one twelve is about to come in now. Give me one, give us one second. Mike is in now. What's going on, sir? Peace and blessings. How are you guys? All right, this this is a long time coming here. <laughs> this is a long time coming. This is totally. Why is it a long time coming? We we well, I knew I was going to interview one twelve when I heard Peaches and Cream. When I heard uh, Cupid, I was uh, like, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm gonna talk to those brothers one of these days. I'm gonna talk to okay. them. Okay, all right, and okay, just, yeah. just just to let them know how many babies were made uh, with these songs <laughs> that y'all have. Put out. For me to break up with maybe from Cupid. Yeah, babies, babies that we are not responsible for. Let me get <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Let me, let me put that disclaimer out there, man. <laughs> yes, yes. Everyone, that's separate. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's, right. that's, that's all separate, y'all. That's right. That's um, right. So, uh, so yeah, we we actually just waiting on um, uh, Slim to come in, and then uh, yeah. we definitely we're going to uh, get started with everything. Cool. But so, how how are you doing with this with the COVID and stuff, man? Uh, you know, you guys know why I actually contracted COVID back in July of last year. Wow. And uh, it was rough. Uh, you know, it was, it was touch and go. It was, it was going to be, Slim was going to have his solo career again. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> for a minute, that's how, that's how bad it was, man. I thought I was, you know, but um, yeah, it, it was, it was, it was rough, you know, and, but uh, I pulled through. It was like three weeks uh, of just not being able to smell and taste and you know, it, it was it was it was rough, man, for like three weeks. Matter of fact, I just got back my sense of smell about a month ago. Wow. wow. This COVID is something else, man. This COVID is something else. Like I couldn't smell anything. You know what I mean? So it was it was crazy. Wow. But, um, I, I, know, I had go ahead. Go ahead. I, I had put a post up. I was like, the normal ain't the new normal no more. Nah, <laughs> man. I don't, I don't think it'll ever be the same again, to be honest with you. No, you know, no, it, it, it's, it ain't it's, supposed to. Right? No, you're right. You're absolutely right. I think uh, we, we're supposed to learn from this and move forward. So, um, I do appreciate being on the planes and not having that middle seat action no more, man. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. You know, I'm pretty. That's pretty awesome. But, uh, yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah. So, uh, what, 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 what other uh, that I want you? Well, I ain't, ain't gonna get too much into everything. Um, uh, uh, once Slim come on, so uh, give us, give us one second, okay, um, sir. And uh, I want to just want to make sure everything is cool because push comes to shove. Uh, we'll figure some out on our end. So give me one second, okay? Okay. I see them drinks you got back there. What's your favorite? Uh, I'm a I'm a red wine drinker. However, um, my Camus is my is is my go to wine right now. So if you haven't checked out Camus, that's a really good red. Uh, it's 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 really really good. But um, since I've been on this keto diet, I haven't been able to drink. That's why they're still here on the you know they're still on the water. You like yeah. the keto diet? I hate it, but you know, I know I, you do because it's so nasty. It's way worse than vegan. 
Yeah, yeah, man, it's it's terrible. But I've I've lost forty pounds, and and so yeah, it's it's, it's it it does it did what it was supposed to do. You know what I mean? So I was the, when I started, I was one, I was a uh, two forty two. Now I'm two o two. So wow. Okay. And how long have you been on the diet? I've been on it since uh, I want to say April of April of last year. Wow. April of and it and it did it. You know, smooth like it wasn't like you know all of a sudden you lost a lot of weight and it, you know because your body it takes a minute for your body to adjust to that well so it was gradual but you definitely saw the results and you know I definitely saw the results I'm still losing weight too so um, trying to figure out when I'm gonna because you have to get off of ketosis for a while and then get back on it so I'm trying to figure out when I'm gonna do it but I just honestly I just like the way I look right now <laughs> so I don't know <laughs> I don't know if I want to stop anytime soon, man. We got videos to do it and, and photo shoots and all this stuff too. So I just gotta be with, yeah, be with yeah. Add that link into your diet. That way you can still eat healthy and still feel good and not add gain as much. And what into it? The vegan. The vegan. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, I, I was big on the vegan for like four years. Like I, I went vegan for like four years prior to co uh, prior to. Uh, let me see. Prior to last year. Prior to last year. Yep. Wow, it's 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 crazy. It's it's because when I was growing up, see, I'm 42. So when I was growing up, I'm just kind of like, man, you can eat anything. Now it's like you can't eat nothing, like nothing, oh, like earth. you can't eat nothing, man, because it's got high fructose corn syrup in it, and you know everything. Like that's that's the hardest thing as far as keto, because you pretty much can you can eat all the meats that you want. You can eat cheese and all this other stuff, but when it comes to like things like ketchup and barbecue sauce and teriyaki sauce, you can't eat none of that stuff. So all the things that you know you're thinking, oh man, it ain't got sugar, and it got a ton of sugar. Yeah, and, and barbecue sauce causes prostate cancer. Exactly. Exactly. Now, a lot of people don't know that. You know, black people, we love our barbecue sauce. Well, I'm yeah. talking about like, yeah. <laughs> Put it on there. Sissy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Invite your brothers to the barbecue. No, I'm good. I'm straight. No, I'm good. I, I just eat these rice cakes and be good. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's, I, that's that's my only thing. It's 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 never the workout. It's always more so like the eating, right? That's right. always like because you know, on, on the way to my house, it's like you pass by so much stuff. I mean, because Popeyes just in itself, right? <laughs> I think it, I think if the moment you sniff Popeyes, that's like you gonna gain like ten pounds. I'm telling you, and then they got out with a chicken sandwich too with that brioche bun. Trust me, I had one before before I got on this COVID. I had one. I had to taste it. Everybody else would taste it. I had to have one. So I had to have it. That was a mean chicken sandwich right there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because before before it really got even even popping like that, I I had went on a uh, I had tried the chicken sandwich. I'm like, man, this is pretty good. And then literally like overnight, everybody's like, oh man, chicken sandwich. Oh man, chicken sandwich. Oh man, chicken sandwich. Uh -huh. I'm like, man, this you know, but right. it, but but I guess once you once you've been doing doing the diet for so for so long, like the fast food isn't even appealing anymore. It really is, man. And and, and uh, the when I did it. I really, because, you know, I'm from Atlanta, but so we home of the Chick-fil-A, you know, like we, that's, that's where the Chick-fil-A sandwich originates. So, you know, of course I had to do a comparison. So I added, you know, the Chick-fil-A over here. Then I had the spicy, spicy one from Popeye's. I, I just got to try it just to see. And, uh, but other than that, man, fast food, man, I haven't had fast food in, see? I can man, it's been years since I've had fast, like fast food, man. Like it's that, Cause I just, uh, it's unappealing to me because when you, Sit and watch the 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 YouTube's and how they make a, a burger, you know, the, how they actually make a quote unquote burger from McDonald's, and you know what I mean, and, and how they, the cheese ain't even really cheese, and you know what I mean, it's just man, it, it's unappealing, man. And, and we go to so many places overseas and stuff like that, man. And they got so much awesome food, it's like you wouldn't even want to eat, you know, that BS, man. Like you wouldn't, you know, if that's your thing, that's your thing. But for me, yeah. I, 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 if I'm like you said, you're 42, I'm 44, bro, like. I've, I'm really taking note in um, my health now, man. And so many black men do not take care of themselves. They, you know, man, I'm scared, bro. I'm going to the doctor, bro. And shit. They're going to say, hey, man, but <laughs> it's not the doctor that's telling you you already got it, fool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> man, the doctor going to give me counsel, bro. Like, you already got that shit. What are you talking about? <laughs> the doctor going to give me counsel. Hey, no, hey, he just going to tell you you have it already. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. Right. And, and that's crazy because you, you see so much stuff because we because everything is so so you know accessible to us like like I, I think I seen a video or something of someone burning uh, some cheese and it took years to burn. 
uh, 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 it took year, not years, but it took like a long time for that to cheese to burn. Right. So well, even with that, just put it in water, and right. and it, it don't dissolve right away. Like it it's is. like it's like plastic. Cheese, it is right. Yeah, it's, it's like plastic. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm like, wait a minute, I just yeah, fake yeah. Seriously, I'd be like, man, wait a minute, I just ate a triple cheeseburger. Wait a minute. Right. <laughs> wait, right. wait, wait a minute. <laughs> That's right, man. We 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 gotta do better about the, the, the foods that we put in our bodies and stuff, man. And, and and I'm starting to see more and more people being more aware and conscious of what it is that they're putting in their bodies and stuff because it it is important that we, you know, uh we curb that, man, because that fast food, man, that ain't the move. You know, and then you then you wonder why you got diabetes, you wonder why you got uh uh, heart conditions and lupus and all this other stuff, man. It, it, it's what we consume. It's what we put in our body man, that we can prevent. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Because I, I know because I, I, because because we had we 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 stopped doing like fast food and stuff because every time you would eat it, you would like it smells good and then you order it, but then immediately you like sluggish and then immediately like you're regretting it. It's like that wasn't even that good. Like yeah, it wasn't it was even that good. I was in the bathroom. Yeah, or you in the bathroom. Yeah, I smell right. it. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's, it's amazing. But like, I, but I guess I guess we'll go because a uh, uh, slim trying to log on now. Um, so. Let me give you, let me give y'all the proper let me give you the proper introduction. So uh seven albums deep. Yes. We are talking about y'all, Peaches and Cream, only you, your letter, yeah. Cupid, anywhere you already know. I mean, there was joints on there that didn't even come out that were like joints. Mm -hmm. Don't hate me with Twister. All these like <laughs> like like it's 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 crazy. And and now with the the newly released 112 forever uh have songs like forest 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 is my jam y'all i give y'all 112 this is mike how you doing today sir peace, yeah. and, blessing. peace and blessing to you both man how are you guys doing thank y'all for having us i'm peachy that's right that's right definitely definitely so 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 let's get into it how did you get started singing how did i get started singing um in the in the business or just period Oh, one, one, one second, Mike, because now Slim Slimly got on. Okay. Yay. There we go. Oh, we finna have us a party now. We finna have us a party now. I got it. I got it. Can <laughs> Wonderful. What's up, bro? Yeah, yeah, we finna have us a party now. So, so again, y'all, I give y'all, uh, um, they have been nominated for several awards as well. Um, I give y'all 112. Baby making music all day. Look, we just was finna listening to only you just a minute ago. I was like, yeah, buddy. So yes, yes. So I give y'all one twelve. Yay! What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? That's right, y'all. What's up? Okay. Uh, um. So um. So I was asking Mike. So uh, I guess you guys can go uh, um, back and forth. So he was asking. So Mike. So how how did you get started singing? I'm sorry for interrupting. Okay. Um, yeah. So how we got started, man. Um, basically, I'm known in the group as as the the guy that uh, founded the group, you know, pretty much. So, um, I just I just wanted to sing, man, and and we wanted to be, you know, we saw a lot of the artists like a Joe to see, like Boys to Men. We listened to Commission and, and Take Six, and we just knew that we had the same kind of gift that these dudes had, and we knew that if given the opportunity, we could make some great classic music. So um, we would sing at the time. There wasn't a, there wasn't so so deaf and rowdy records and LaFace and all that that's in Atlanta now. And uh, and I know these, these young people nowadays don't know when I, we tell them this story. They they're like, "What? How did y'all ever get in the, in the music business?" Because nowadays it's so easy for you to get your music out. Back then we had to sing for somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody to mm -hmm. to get into the you know to just to let somebody hear our demo tape, you know what I mean? So what we, what we would do is go around Atlanta and sing at these talent shows, uh, be it high school, showcases, no matter where. And we just we just sung our asses off, man, until we got in front of some people that knew Puff and um, Puff heard us and uh, with, a, with a little encouragement from Kim Porter, Faith Evans and Usher, he signed us and that's how that, that's how that thing started. Wow, that's that's pretty dope. Was it intimidating from, because of y'all being from ATL and then being signed by Bad Boy? Was that like an intimidating feel, or how did that make you feel? 
No, nah, it was it wasn't intimidating because Bad Boy still was in his infancy. You know, like we were we were we were one of the groups that helped create the Bad Boy sound. You know, at the time, the only artists that were that were signed to Bad Boy was One Twelve, Faith, Big, Craig, and Total. And yeah. a lot of them hadn't even had music out at that point, so it wasn't. It was. I would say that it was a whirlwind as far as one minute you're not signed and now you are signed and and but you know we didn't really understand the impact you know of what we were about to create you know what i mean so uh, um yeah no we were we it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't uh intimidating at all you know because that would imply that we didn't we didn't work hard enough to succeed you know what i mean like if for us to be intimidated like but no we were we were scared out of our minds sometimes when puff would threaten to, to send our asses home but other- <laughs> <laughs> You know, they said, "Well, the studio." Hey, again. Go go go. hey, y'all late again? All right, spend the money. All right, go back to Atlanta. So, but no, no but um, as far as no, not no, no intimidation. But we definitely knew that the the responsibility that we had. So, so the one thing, and 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 okay, so so Slim, and this is actually for both of y'all. But the one thing is, y'all voices are so unique. You know, you hear Mike. And you know, like every song, I can hear both of y'all, like mm-hmm. clear, mm-hmm. like clear as day is like, oh, oh, that's Mike, oh, that's and it's yeah. and, and, and I I can hear it and and, and it's crazy, it's crazy that it, it, it's it's just, just just what it is, and even even with the new song that y'all, even with for us, it's like, like I'm jamming to that song, like, um, uh, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, like I'm like at the ATM, like they're like, what what what's this dude doing? He's still at the ATM. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. So, 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 Slim, your voice is so different from um, a lot of people's. Like, because you talk way different than you think. It right. sounds differently. Like, like, like. I guess I could say how you how you do it, but <laughs> I don't know how to how you, how you even ask black it. Black. But, you know. Hey, Black Mike, let me tell you something, man. Like, first of all, if he ain't told you, like, he's the Sergeant Slaughter of all, you know what I'm saying, of music and recording, okay? So, <laughs> let me tell you something, man. Like, I, I have a Southern dialect, you know what I mean? I've been trying to say this, it's been 25 years. It's actually been longer than that with Mike, okay? It's been, I've known this man for 30 years. And yeah, he, it's just like, allow me to, you know what I'm saying, like, to, uh, he, he will not allow me to do, you know what I'm saying, to, like, pronounce my words. Any kind of way, it, can, it has to be a certain kind of way. I don't understand. You. That sounded good, but I don't understand what you just said. Oh, man. So it's, so it's, it's, it's stuff like that. But you know what? It's a blessing that, you know, one of the main um, things that distinguish 112 from other groups is the fact that, you know, we we concentrate on every aspect of the music game. So number one, backgrounds. Backgrounds are just as important as the lead, sing- or the lead singing. Okay, so if you notice any of our songs, you know, you you always sing along with the backgrounds as well, just as well as you sing along with the verses and the hook. You know what I'm saying? And we did that for a reason. You know what I mean? So that that was like one of our uh, equations. Now, two, the fact that, you know, no matter how we were presented, whether when you saw four members or you saw two members, you know what I mean? Like you always knew that each individual could hold their own. You know what right. I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? I always, I kind of, um, I, I kind of put the blood, I kind of put that, you know, whole situation also kind of on mic there too. Because I, because at the end of the day, it was like, you can write a song, right? I'm going to sing the song to you, how it's supposed to be, like, this is how we hear it. But now you have to distinguish, distinguish who's going to sing the first verse, who's going to sing this part of it. Who's gonna sing this part? Who's gonna sing that? Who's gonna stay out of the records? So it's just real crazy that you know, um, the first part of our career, you know, even though Mike was the uh, general of the the situation, a lot of times you didn't hear his voice. A lot of times he did that because it was like this. It was like it showed that you know somebody who's not. Um, you know, like, you know, some a lot of people have egos and stuff, you know, they want to hear themselves all the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, like at the, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's one of those things like he he sacrificed that. Now, he's in the it's, it's us two. 
Well, he can't do that no more. So <laughs> now it's like we get a chance to hear. And you know, like it's an absolutely amazing situation. Like you know, it, it's like the vo the vocal everything is great. You know what I'm saying? Um, the words we are concerned on that's great, and just like the homies and the backgrounds are just complete. Well, and 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 the, the, the and the dope part about you guys' album, like yeah, you guys are bring out like certain uh, certain singles and things like that. But some of the dopest songs, like y'all didn't even bring out, like Smile was like that was all like 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 that was my shit. <laughs> Smile was uh, don't hate, don't hate me. That right. was a good one. Um, oh wow. Uh, like like a uh, pleasure and pain pain first album pleasure and pain like that was my like a lot of people really like remember Cupid okay yeah but like y'all don't understand like that whole first album was dope like the whole album like yeah y'all concentrate yeah y'all concentrate on the the, the 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 singles that were out yes that's cool but like throw it all away that was a good one wow um, why does that was a good one like. Like y'all don't understand, like like it was like like some of these songs, like some of the dopest songs, like like was that just by like uh, the company choosing, or is it that was one of those things that y'all was like, ah, we ain't gonna worry about it. Oh, uh, we made sure that we put a premium on making classic albums and not just singles. You feel what I'm saying? Like we right. came from the era where we wanted the entire album. We wanted you be, uh, we wanted you to, to be able to press play and then just let it go. No skill. Yes, yes. That was that was the mind frame. Like yeah. we want, we wanted to, we wanted our music to be the background of your life, you know, so to speak. So if like, so you got it, you got you. If you're washing clothes or you're cooking food or whatever, like you just got one twelve in the background, and you don't have to just stop what you're doing. Go press, you know, uh, skip number three to go to number eight, and then come back to number four because no, we 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 set a mood and we set a tone with our music, and we gave it. Puff basically gave us the, the blueprint to that. You know, it's it's like make a movie when you when you recreate an album, it has to be a movie. You got to have a beginning, middle, and an end. If you think about all the albums, the successful albums that we've had, and uh, the classic albums that we had, you could feel a beginning, middle, and an end. It felt mm -hmm. like the maturation process from the beginning of the album until the until you got satisfied at the end, like with it with its conclusion. You know what I mean? So we put all our we put most of our gangster album uh, songs in the middle because that's mm -hmm. that climax, and then we, we then we, we we eased it off. You know what I'm saying? And then we gave you that ah, moment at the end where it's like you felt satisfied, knowing that you know in the beginning, okay, what's gonna happen? Then that middle part is like, oh shit, they done gave us peace and cream, dance with me, player. Don't hate me, all this, and then we started easing it off at, towards the end. You know, just to you know, it's all about the dynamics, man. You know what I mean? And, and, and painting a uh, painting a picture, and not just doing records for the sake of doing records. And so when we did this new EP, that was the mind frame that we had as well. We wanted to start you off with something that's impactful, get in your face, and then uh, we get we got our you know our gangster records. We you know for us, for example, you know being one of the records uh, exclusive. You know that we're just leading you up. And then mm -hmm. if we bring you back down, you know what I'm saying, with with looking for love and you know, uh 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 anytime and you know, so that was that was the mind frame, man, that we 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 made sure that we did it. So no, it's it wasn't by it, it wasn't by accident or anything like that that we did that. that everything was a thought process with once where we were very cerebral when it came to you know putting albums together. I know that sounds crazy being an artist, you're not really supposed to do a lot of thinking with your you know your creativity, but we thought everything through like for example, here's a fun fact for y'all. Slim don't sing ad libs. None, wow. none of the stuff he does is an ad lib. What he does is he'll sing the verse, he'll go home and <laughs> create whatever he's gonna sing in between that that should be ad libs. He'll go home and create that, and then he'll come back and add that on to. I just I just told a secret about Slim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. But you'll never find another dude that lays in the pocket like Slim. You feel what I'm saying? Because he does his homework. He went home and listened to it. Okay, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this phrase right here. I'm gonna add this instead of like me, where I have to just go off of my emotion, I go off of my feelings and how I feel it. And then you know, so I'm more I'm more on that. Slim's more cerebral when it comes to that. So he'll go home, listen to it. I'm gonna put this ad lib here. I'm gonna put this ad lib here. So by definition, the ad lib is just supposed to come from you know wherever. Right, right. This dude, he he bought the whole system and just created his own way of doing shit. I never <laughs> in my life. 
I was like, man, that is so genius. Like, because it is, because if we write the verses, you would go home and you would write the verse, wouldn't you? You go home and do the verse, you write it, you know, ah, oh, no, that ain't good. Let me, let me, all right, let me change this word. Let me change that. Blah, 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 blah. Slim did the same thing with ad-libs, man. So that's why his ad-libs are so memorable. And that's why, you know, you can sing along to them because they're pretty much they're an extension of the verse. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Yeah, so, you know. Weird. He, course, he, We're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it even was like, and, and I forgot, and I forgot the song. It, 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 it was, it was just Mike. It was uh, missing you every day. I'm missing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So it's like y'all first album. It was like it comes on like straight out the gate, like. Yeah, we broke up. Yeah, yeah, get out of my house. And then it was like, okay, we made up, and there's only you and Cupid. And then it comes back down. You uh, right. you messed up, and you threw it all away. So that, never mind. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> See, now you get it. Yeah, now y'all get it. Well, we talked that the yeah. story, you got to tell the story of a relationship that we was in. Yeah, you're going to have your, your breakup with the girl, and you're going to hate her guts, and you're going to, hey, man, get out, you know, get out of my house, leave, and all this other stuff. But then you get to missing her. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Why you mm-hmm. leave me? You know what I'm saying? Cuban don't lie. You know what I'm saying? Why you throw it all away? Right. You know? So that's the yeah. That was that was the whole premise of it, man. The creative roller coaster, man. The roller coaster. Love's crazy. All of the viewers, I listen to how y'all just went on this whole emotional emotional roller coaster. And don't ever say women don't want. No, 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 no y'all, 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 wait, wait, y'all, y'all put us through it. Y'all, y'all put us through it. Y'all put us through it. You gave it to us. See, 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 see that's why we had songs like "Don't Hate Me," "Don't Don't Hate Me" and "Play It." Hey, yeah. Don't don't hate. Hate. I got you. I got y'all. Don't worry about yeah, it. Don't, don't, y'all don't, hate me. don't hate me with, with you. Y'all go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. She 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 she, she light skin. Don't worry about you, y'all. Okay. <laughs> no, we, I was just gonna speak. I was gonna speak on "Don't Hate Me," man, because uh, that was actually like we actually was listening to Bone Thugs and Harmony on our way to the studio. Yes. And mm-hmm. and, and 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 when I spoke to Slim, it uh, me, again. This is me, you know, being crazy and whatnot. I said, Slim. Bro, you got to do that bone thugs on this, man. And then uh, he was like, "Bro, are you serious?" I said, man, we're uh, like, that, you got to understand that part three album, we didn't give three shits about nothing. Like, we, we, we didn't want to hear no, nah, because we didn't. Because what it was, man, we had got so tired of people saying that the only reason why we were successful is because Puffy was the one pulling all the strings, when not knowing that One Twelve had wrote and produced majority of all our albums and stuff. And we would write for other people as well. Like, uh, mm-hmm. what's, the, what's the song with New Edition song? I know that things ain't yeah. real. Where See we? Like all you do. We want that song with We wrote yeah. it. Yeah, we got yeah. Isley Brothers. We got the Isley Brothers. Float on, float on. Y'all wrote that? Really? Don't you know, won't you love? Don't you know, need to There's a lot of songs that we, like, I, I was speaking as far as group it's, concerned. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. But, but yeah, that was... Wait, 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 pause, flag on play, <laughs> you can't go back, y'all wrote Float On for the Isley Brothers. Yeah. Float on, float on, float on, don't you know I want to love, don't you know I need to love. I was a teenager and I was so in love, I'm still in love with that song, like I was a teenager when y'all came, when, yeah. when y'all came out in general, I'm not that much younger than y'all, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, that, that kissing you remix, yeah. Uh, Every day I keep living this way. I'm not gonna say I wanna kiss you. Yeah. Oh, how about man? Oh, oh, what, what did uh, what's called uh, uh, the things you do make me run. Uh, what's that, Gina Thompson? Gina, Gina yeah. Thompson. Yeah. 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 People telling us that the only reason why we were successful is because Puff was the one pulling the strings and whatnot. So we was rebellious as hell on that third album. Like they were like, "We need y'all to go left." Nah, we going right. You know what I'm saying? We were just we were bucking on everything, man. But <laughs> Puffy was cool with it. 
he was cool with it as long as we kept on giving him hits. We gave right. him the first record we gave him was It's Over Now. Then the yeah. second record we gave him was like uh it was like Dance with Me or something like that. Yeah. 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 But then, just the dancing alone was puffy influence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we did we did that record. It was like, yo, Slim, you gotta sing this like one of them bone thugs and harmony people uh, uh uh dudes, man. And he was like, Man, are you chill around that, bro? Just just go for it, man. And then so when we wrote the song, it was so I did it like kind of like uh what, what's the song? Girls in the club don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So if you listen to that, that's how the first verse. It's a shame, but this game, baby, I got to give me ain't no thing. Yeah, that's where that came from. That's where that vibe came from. And then when Slim came in, it came from that bone does the harmony, but we were fucking. Like, yeah. It's always the same two nuts. Always the two nuts. Yeah. It's always the same two that you know saying that did all the crazy stuff on on the house and stuff, man. You know, but that's that's the reason why we did the EP the way we did, and and we wanted that influence and just let everybody know that because Slim and I really hadn't ever been on a song together before, aside from "Don't Hate Me." That was uh, like uh, 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 the the record the record we did with uh, R. Kelly. Um, Oh, oh yeah, that right. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm not to you, but yeah. I'm not to you. Yeah, yeah, and that was on part three as well too. So like only two songs out of seven albums. You know that me and this dude was on. You know, so when we did this new EP, we wanted to make sure that the world knew that just because our voices are so different, it didn't mean that you know we couldn't come together and and create a, a incredible body of work. You know what I mean? So that's you know. But the, and that, but that's the thing because we all do come together, even for us, like y'all. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, like, like, like there's there's a magic there that it's like an unsaid magic. It's like you get in the studio, you go, you cool, I'm cool, all right, cool. Let's get up in there and let's just do it. And and you know, and that's the dope part about it is because like y'all got people do like a lot of uh, you know words that you can't say. Um, our childhoods, pretty much, our high school, middle school. No, I ain't gonna say no, I ain't middle school, but high, high school. school. High, high school was like, yeah, yeah, because it, it's, yeah, my wife can say middle school, you know, younger. She's younger. But, 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 but definitely, 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 thank you so much for like every it's you, you guys' music and and like um as soon as like because i'm i'm like i was like waiting like i was like i know they're coming out with another album i said i already got for us i said i'm just waiting for the rest of this stuff to just drop on down because albums not released like they are like they was back in the day before you drop a single and then three months later then the album comes now the music is so vast now it's like you have to kind of pick through it like how do you guys feel about that like yes. i know what i'm looking for you know what's crazy? It's it's like the ingenious of like how Mike and I did or we're doing this situation. You have to understand like we're work we're we're working through some real uncharted times. This this is with the whole COVID situations. It's it's kind of wild that you know like the way we we really uh, promote our albums is through touring. We're a touring act, so we can't do any touring or whatever, right? So. Yeah. We decided, you know, that, you know, financially and, you know, it's just like what it is. You know, we don't want people to be like out of sight, out of mind. You don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Well, you know, before COVID, 112 headlining all of these, you know, what I'm saying joints, whatever, whatever. But um, what we wanted to do was like we wanted to sprinkle people with music. You know what I mean? And we wanted to see the interaction between us, you know, what I'm saying, our brand and our fans out there and people that, you know, had just jumped in after we had, you know, won the versus situation. It was a situation like, okay, hey, let's let's uh, really show the people that you know who've been with us for twenty five years, and then the, uh, the new fans that might have just might have just heard about us after the uh, versus situation. Let's 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 give them something. You know what I'm saying? Now, like we had an overwhelming, amazing response. Like so, it's a great situation for our EP. So. Best just know that Mike and I we're definitely we're working on music. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, and but we we also we want to parallel that with you know the possibility of the doors opening back up, the shots, whatever that like, so we can get back to normal and we get a chance to actually 
perform the records. Like, no, no disrespect from for virtual stuff, but it's just like, the I, you know, the, like I can't believe I'm saying this. Like, I, cause I was <laughs> like, I missed the actually going to the radio station, sit in front of the, you know what I'm saying? To actually, you know what I mean? Like hands on situations, you know, coming outside. 50, 100 fans outside after we do our our, our radio or, or TV situations and people are then we're out there like hugging the fans, taking pictures, you know what I mean? So it's like, we need to get back to that. And I think that this album right here that we're working on, we're putting together, that body of work is about to be absolutely amazing. So if you, y'all, y'all, if, you know, we were voted, what was our, we, we had the top 50 records, top 50 R&B uh, albums out of last year. And it was an EP, so imagine what this album is gonna feel like. But we need the we need the energy from our fans. We wanna touch and feel them, and you know what I'm saying, actually perform for them. Like, and and and, and the, the crazy uh, the crazy part about it too is like I was sitting here going through my music collection. You re remember how we used to have like the books of CDs, and you put in about three hundred, <laughs> and you can just okay. you know, and you know, I got all the one twelve albums. I don't care, I don't care what's going on. But I see all my stuff got stolen. So I was like, okay, all right. So now a little piece of my heart is gone because now like, CDs or whatever. <laughs> so, like, that, correct me if I'm wrong. Damn, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> you guys have about three or four mixes to only you. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. So, because you have a, because a lot of people haven't heard the slow jam version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. C -C right. We got, we got, we got three versions. We had, we had three versions. We had the uh, original. Mm -hmm. uh, with the Casey and the Sunshine Band sampled mm -hmm. in it. Then we had the Stevie J remix, which is the uh, was one of the really popular ones, the one that we did the video with and we shut down Times Square with. And then we had a slow version of Only You. It was like an R&B slow down version of Only You. So you're absolutely right. We have three versions of Only You. And that, that's that's a dope part about it because y'all have to hear it. You go, oh, wow. And it's slow down. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it makes you relove the song all right. over again. Right. Like yep. oh, oh and you shit! Can sing with them. <laughs> huh? And you can sing with them. Yeah. Versus, like, yeah. Okay. Right. We felt like it, we felt like we wanted to do an R and B version of that too. So just so you know, we didn't want to be known as just being singing over up tempo records because we're actually crooners. Like in our our natural inclination is singer singers. You know what I mean? But it just so happens that our destiny you know, may, uh, allowed us to go into a world where we could touch the R&B and we can, you know, hip hop heads as well, or the pop side as well with our up-tempo records and stuff as, as well. But we wanted to be known, you know, as R&B singers in addition to singing on, over up-tempo records as well. So that's why we kind of did the R&B version of that. Cause we, we, didn't, we didn't want our fans to think, oh man, that was, you know, cause the crazy thing was initially people were like upset with 112 on that first album because they thought, the first album was going to be a bunch of up tempo songs, you know, with that, with that, you know, with that vibe, like only you the remix. Like they thought they were getting that the entire album. So when they got down, they was like, man, this thing ain't slow. But then when they listened to it, they were yeah, like, oh, yeah. this, this, you can't this, talk this, about this. you no know, more slim. Yeah, man. So <laughs> they thought they were going to party, but they ended yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's crazy. Yeah, no, first magazine, you know, when we first came out, they gave they gave the first album three and a half stars. And then towards the end of the year, they apologized and gave us yep, like they sure did. Album. Yep, they gave us like three and a half mics at first, and then you know they came back. It was a whole lot of apologizing, man, because yeah. um the uh the actual uh uh what what was it, the the um program director in 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 a in a certain city, I won't say the city and I won't, but it was a certain city. <laughs> And uh, they refused to play Cupid. Mm. They refused to play Cupid. And Cupid took off on in every now. This is a major, this was a major city. This was a major, major radio station. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's only, it's only you know, uh, songs used to break out in all, uh, three places. New York, Chicago, L.A. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Back then. So one of them three. I ain't even going to, like I said, I ain't going to name it. But uh, with the program director, he came back after like we we did our first round of promotion and stuff like that, and we went to him and he let him know like, yo, this is our new single, and we played it for him, and he's like, I don't like it. It it it, it doesn't fit any. It doesn't fit any genre. It doesn't fit any, uh, you know, anything any any box that we have as far as uh, R&B <laughs> is concerned. It's not up tempo. It's not mid tempo. I mean, it's not it's not a ballad. It's not up tempo. 
you know, like I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. And so we were like, okay. And then we went back around, we circled back uh a couple of months later. Dude came uh, in, uh, off the rip. Hey man, I just want to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry. Y'all were right. I, mean, I ain't never apologized to any artist before. I'm apologizing to you guys. Y'all were right. This is a hit. I am sorry. <laughs> you know, just, yeah. he, he apologized. I mean, because I mean, but he was right though. Like uh, Cupid didn't fit any genre. You know what I'm saying? It was, <laughs> we didn't. Work. So. in high school. Like, you, you know it's R&B. <laughs> you, you know it's R&B, but it wasn't like the, the, the typical R&B song. It was a song. Cute love song. Because it was like, you know, you got you clapping, yeah. and then you got that little... Yeah, yeah so it, it was different. Bumping and grinding on each other. Right. I right. see that now. That went so now you went now. Come on now. Like, you know, they just like, Mike, did you hear that? Like, they try, she tried to blame that on us now. Now that... Right. <laughs> <laughs> All mamas and daddies that was listening around this time, we did not. And in four <laughs> words, and you, that was an argument, people. Right. Okay, right? right. Like, y'all, 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 y'all are segre- surrogates to like a lot of kids. Like, oh, oh lord, oh, 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 I got it, man. Got it. I got it. I got my, it. Camera, my camera going dead. My phone going dead. <laughs> <laughs> man, send all, you know, what I'm saying child support statements and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You hey, can't put that all on mic. You can't put that all on mic because I, I remember you on only, uh, the only you uh, uh, a soul remix. You, you went off. You was like, oh, I'm lost without you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that was that. Oh, oh my old face. Yes. Oh. Oh, I, was, I didn't know what was happening. You feel me? Like, I. I, I I was vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we gonna hey, listen. We gonna reach out to Biden and see if we can't get this deferred too. <laughs> Seriously, you can't be like for real, for real, like that. Like he owes me a check. Yeah. <laughs> I that all the time too. Guys, come up to me. He'd be like, send me. You can just see like the the ages of the kids. I already know exactly what is about to happen. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was that that was room one twelve. Uh huh. That was one twelve. That was room one twelve. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And, and, and right here, you know what I'm saying? That was pledging pains. Oh, what? <laughs> hey, hold on. And not to mention, I just said only you. I remember uh you already know you you was on some slim. Come on oh. now. Come on, you you yeah, was like that's why I said that's slim right? <laughs> He was like, nice girl. I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I get a hold of <laughs> he said, hold up. Hold up. <laughs> this, is, this is highly aggressive. <laughs> you know what? This interview is over. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my remove button? Yeah, uh, but honestly, r- real talk, uh, seriously, but you guys had already reached um, legendary status, like icons in this. You have already reached this. I mean, even before this latest album that you you dropped like it, it's already it's already there like like because your music is timeless like you like when you listen to no matter what song it is it's all like it doesn't have some certain music have have a date on it and right. you know like what time period there was but when you listen to cupid uh anywhere you can't tell what what decade it is like like it could drop today and right. still live on anybody's uh, uh, uh chart like to me it is you know and, right. and i'm really into music you know right right so so this this latest album um you know guys i mean to me like like it's it's dope as hell i couldn't wait i let me i'm streaming this whole thing i'm gonna download it and it's going straight into the playlist um, that's, that's what it that's, that's what it is it's going to play this it's even in our our rotation like 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 i ain't gonna put the whole album on that because i don't want to give people stuff away for free <laughs> Oh yeah! Yes. Oh my God! All yeah. cried out with Allure. Oh, wait a minute! Oh, <laughs> wait, wait. Slim, see? There you go again. Slim, Slim, Slim. There you go again. Over to Allure. You feel me? And check this out. Look, this, hey, and I, I want to put that blame. I want to actual blame on your said uh, Corey Rooney and Mariah Carey. Where's Mariah Carey? At? Cause they did. I, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Before it come to me, I just did what I was supposed to do. And you know what I'm saying? I want to blame Mike. I want to blame Mike for you know what I'm saying. Uh, you know, I thought about. I, I listened. I listened to. I didn't listen to secondary the secondary music. Okay. All right. So 
if I heard secondary music, you know what I'm saying? It was in Mike's, you know what I'm saying? Mike's grandma, uh, grandma, uh, uh, mama's car. So technically, you, you, I defer it over to my brother over here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'll take it. I mean, I'll, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would never know. I would never know. <laughs> hey, listen. I, I, never, <laughs> I, never, I never heard that song prior to that. Corey Rooney had to literally. When we were recording it, Corey Rooney was playing it on the piano. And that's the reason why I sung it the way I did, because I never heard the Lisa, Lisa Full Force version. I never heard it. My mom is an evangelist, so we can't listen to secular music. You know what I'm saying? Huh. So, so like when I heard it, I was like, okay, like, if Prince would tell you, he'd be like, yo, um, Slim gonna hear it, and then he gonna do what, what he wanna do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, if I do go too much, Sergeant Slaughter over here, he gonna, he gonna be like, no, nah, no, nah, nah, man. Nah. <laughs> hey, look, do it again. <laughs> do it again. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You pressing the button like, hey, man, that was, that was good, bro. Do it again. Oh. <laughs> but, that's that's funny funny. Because, but think about it. You, you When you listen to All Cried Out, you don't even you don't even hear the, like the original verse. You can't even hear the original second verse anymore. Like you got to sing it the way Flim sings. <laughs> that's that's, right. that's the impact. You know what I'm saying? And and that, that's the crazy part because the, like like the, the whole song fire. But the two parts that stand out to me like like the most is when Slim goes, "Tears we're causing inferno, baby." So that was part. And then and then I hear Mike in the background, "Left me so confused." I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, put him up, put him up. He's just the blame me." That was that was the cherry. I was like, this this song is is it, fine. It's, it makes you want to go listen to the original, but it's but it's also like like you can't deny like 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 the dope that like you can't deny that. That's why I said there's no there's no decade that you can never place you guys music in, like like because it can live on the today's chart today. It can it can live on that comfortably. You know what I'm saying? And and that that's that's the that's the dope part about it. Now, as far as the R and B today, what do you guys think of how it you know? Because because you guys are still doing you guys are still doing a thing. Like I, I don't want you to change the formula up. That that works perfect for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, what do you think of today's R and B and rap? Um, I think it's actually, man. And see, I don't want to sound like a you know a. a an old guy, or whatever, you know what I mean? Because you didn't say that, you know, well, my our music was the best, you know, era and all this other stuff, man, because music is, is ever evolving. And so, um, and I had to learn this with this new EP because if you listen to a lot of the, 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 the melodies and the cadences that we have on this new EP, it's nothing like how we did, with the exception of maybe for us and then the R&B record. Everything mm -hmm. else, man, it has that new age uh, kind of Chris Brown, Drake kind of you know, in our kind of vibe to, you know, the way that, you know, that the way that these young people write and sing songs now. So that was something challenging, you know, for me, because like I said, I'm a, I'm a old school traditional singer. Like I'm a, you know, like, I mean, I, I spent my time in church, man, but I ain't really spent time in church. You know what I mean? But I sung like I was in, I sung like a church. I sung like a church boy. But so I had to evolve and, you know, Slim was already on it. You know what I mean? As far as the, the vibe or whatever. So I had to, you know, catch up to where he was as far as when we did the EP or whatever. But you know, it was at first I thought I was like, man, this is so elementary the way that they doing they doing the melodies and stuff like that. Man, I actually went in the booth and, and tried to do that stuff. Man, I was like, well, what is this craziness <laughs> that's going on right now, man? Because I had to strip down myself as a vocalist. I had to strip, not dumb it down, because I, I hate when people say dumb down because you know that that gives a negative connotation. But it it was more of a strip down version of what I know how I normally sing. And I had to really follow the cadence and stay within a box or whatever. And as singers, you don't you don't really like to sing in a box. You want to you don't be free and just be able to do whatever you want to do. But in this world that we live in, musically, you got to fit within a box because these kids are singing along with these cadences that you have. You know what I mean? So um, it, that was challenging. You know that is. But so I give. Whereas in the beginning, I was kind of like, you know, man, that's simple, man. Like anybody can do that. I actually record it and then realize it's not as simple as I thought it was. And now I have a, a newfound respect for what's going on in, in R and B right now because it's not as easy as a lot of people think it is. You know, especially for somebody who it's like if you if you're if if you play like if you're a prince and you play like 15 instruments and then all they want you to do is go in there and play the triangle. 
You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the mentality that you have to have now. And, you know, with the music, it still sounds good, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's simplified versus, you know, you being, you know, playing all these other different instruments and stuff. So I got a newfound respect for the, the new music that, that's out right now because it's not as it's not as simple as people, you know, think it is. Right. Where Definitely. do you guys, like, see yourself or rank as um, the greatest male R&B groups? Like, where would you rank yourself as? In our generation? Just overall. Okay, so I, I'm just gonna start from where, what, what, where, uh, who influenced the top premier, right? New edition, mm -hmm. Boys to Men, mm -hmm. Jodeci, mm -hmm. one twelve. I'm with you on that one. I'm with you on that. How was your relationship with Biggie, and how did he influence you guys? Oh, Big was cool. Big was so cool, man. He was a, he was the coolest dude. He was he was a lot of people got the impression that you know if you listen to his music, that's what he was, and he was the exact opposite of it. He was a caring dude. He was he was he was a genius, actually. He was like one of the smartest people that you ever meet, and he was a poet. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people say he was a lyricist. No, this dude was a poet, and um, and how a lot of rappers nowadays. Um, pride themselves on, on not writing anything down. Big was the originator, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Big was the originator of not writing anything down. What he would do is he'll sit and sur survey the room. You know what I mean? And then, as a matter of fact, uh, there was one time where, you know, we had a session in one room, and he in the Neve room, and he had a, a session in the SSL room. And I think Lil C's was like, yeah, he was coming back and forth from the, the rooms and stuff. He was like, yo, Big in the other room, he want to holler at y'all. So we went in. And the smoke was from up to here, so we couldn't really see nobody. <laughs> but you know, when we saw Big, you know, it was Big, and he was sit, he was just sitting to himself, right? And then like Junior Mafia was in there, Charlie Baltimore was sitting next to Jay Z. You know what I mean? Like this was this is before Jay Z was Jay Z, and you know, Charlie Baltimore, Charlie Baltimore, whatever. And everybody was baked. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was high out their mind, whatever. And Big just <laughs> Big just playing this this loop over and over again, right? And so Twelve was like, all right, man, we got to get on out of here, bro, before we can't get in contact. We ain't going to be able to, you know, sing anything. But we stayed in there. And Big finally came up, like, when it was like 4.30 in the morning or something like that. And Big went into the to the, to the the booth, and he created that, that song, my 112 CD blast, real fast. She came first, I came last. Yeah. It was because we had came into the room, and, you know, he really was like our dude, and he really he really repped for us. You know, and then he put us in the room. And you think that... That uh, 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 life after death album, he says one twelve so many times because he really was like fans of our music and he really loved the one twelve sound and, and we don't got nothing but the utmost respect for this dude. Every March, every March night, I, I take a shot, you know, what I'm saying for my man, just you know, and it, it's 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 been a it's been a while since so, you know that I've been doing that, but that's that's something I do annually, and uh, I look forward to it this March night. When y'all, when the East Coast West Coast beef was going on, how, like. I know y'all was probably like, leave me the hell out of this. Yeah, we was in though. Yeah, we were there. Yeah. Y'all yeah. were kind of grandfathered in it. Like, yeah. 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 yeah but we was it, but they didn't care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it was crazy because we had we had respect with certain artists that, you know, what I mean, you would think we have situations with. It was not with the certain artists. It was it was more of the people, the streets that were yeah. actually feeding into the theory that, you know. People were actually having people killed and stuff like that, and you know, just it, and like people were actually picking sides. I almost felt like what's going on in this government right now. So that's why I'm like, you know, that's exactly what I was gonna get ready to say. Like, yeah. it's the it's the craziest situation. Like, you know, but but you know, just to let everybody under, to understand, you know, what I mean, like, not only are we very cool with Snoop, like we work with Snoop, you know, what I'm saying with Uncle Snoop's army, we were all we were always cool. You know, what I'm saying like. Uh, uh and, and the whole crew, DPG, all of them, you know, what I'm saying those are our folks, like real friends. We call family, dads, and corrupt, and you know, like you know, what I mean, all of them, you know, what I'm saying, quick, all of them, all of, we're all cool with them, you know, what I'm saying. So it just, it was just crazy, with just the narrative that was put out there, you know, what I mean, because you know, you got two of the most powerful rappers, you know, what I'm saying, people are soaking up whatever word they're saying, and people have drawn a line. Literally drawing a line in between, the, you know, what I'm saying in the United States, and said either you on this side, or Ooh, you on that side. side. It's, it's crazy. 
I yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah. We from the South, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the South but, you know, we was we was representing that BBE, so we had to, you know, say refi man, and, and you know, it, it it was justifiably so. So you know, we we got thrown into it, but you know, we come from a we come from a mind frame uh, that you know we we're family. You know, we were the bad boy family. So if you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. You know what I mean? So that was that was the whole case, man. But like Slim said, we were so cool with a lot of these other artists prior to everything going down because. 12 had already been out in the West Coast. Like, the West Coast had love for 12, so they was conflicted. We you know what I'm saying? They was, they, was yeah. yeah, they were so conflicted, man. They Like, people, they wanted to hate on us, but then they were like, man, but I just got finished listening to these niggas. You know what I'm saying? You know, they had to, we, we had to really take step. Everybody had to take a step back and just, you know, take evaluation of what was really going on. And a lot of that's like Slim said, a lot of it was perpetuated by the media and the outside, you know, being, you know, outside uh, forces and stuff, man, because that media really jumped in and made it East Coast. They the one that coined the phrase East Coast, West Coast. Like we mm -hmm. never, you know, we, we didn't want no parts of that, man, because we knew that we, we spent a lot of time in LA. So you know what I'm saying? on that West Coast, we were like, bro, how are we gonna just, just stop? Servicing, you know, one half of the country. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So it was it was crazy. So we were we were caught in the middle of a lot of that stuff, and we tried our best to, you know, squash that and, and let everybody know that we had love for the Bay Area, we had love for uh, for LA, we had love for you know that whole West Coast, we had love for Vegas, everything. We just had we had love, and we was like, no, this ain't it, it, so much division amongst Black people. Anyway, the last thing that we need to do is take two arms and. But nobody wanted to hear that, man. So it, it, it ended the way that the most high um wanted it to, or needed it to be in however, you know, however you want to, you know, phrase that. But um it happened the way that it happened and, and uh it, we we are at a loss, you know, for two for two deaths. You know what I'm saying? Like I mean, uh, there was a lot of other people that, that died in between that, but those two main focuses was on big and pop. And we lost two of the biggest giants in, in rap history, man. And and um and and we'll never heal, man. I don't. I don't feel like. No. And the, the crazy part about it is like, you know, you sleep and you wake up. It's like, man, we, man, it's East Coast West Coast. Man, it's a war. You're like, wait, wait a minute, nigga. I just woke up. Right. <laughs> right. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Right. It happens right. so fast. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was very taboo of how fast it happened. Right. Man, just imagine if that was happening right now with social media and all this. Yeah. Stuff. Oh uh, it, it would. It would be a whole different world, man. Um. But yeah, we we just we really just we were we were overwhelmed by just just the impact of what music does to people. Like you can you can start a war in one, you know what I mean? And with with your music, you know, being that powerful, having that kind of voice. And I think when the powers that be, when they realized just how powerful we were, we had to put a stop to it. You know what I'm saying? You had the biggest, you had one of the biggest artists on the East Coast, had one of the biggest artists on the West Coast going against each other. It, it was, man, I, you can't tell me that, you know, and a lot of times, I, you know, people say I'm a conspiracy theorist or whatnot, but I feel like they realized the power that be realized just how powerful our voices were starting to become. Well, we could affect change. So basically what's happening right now with all the athletes and all the artists being able to speak on behalf of, you know, uh, uh, like us as a people and, you know, come up with these different agendas and speaking on behalf of us or whatever. That's what that that it, it, its intimacy was in the 90s, the late 90s and stuff, when we started to understand that we had a voice. And yes, we could affect change and we could do something, you know, to bring about, you know, with these politicians instead of just brushing us to the side because we don't know any better. You know, right is right, wrong is wrong. And that's what we were trying to tell the world. No, we're not politicians. We're not political scientists. But we see right when we see right and we see wrong when we see wrong. And our voices started to, you know, affect change. Well, you know, and we, we got to put a stop to that. We got to put a stop. So I think that's I think that had a lot to do with that as well. I want to commend you on that because I was watching. Um, I think it's called One Night in Miami with yeah. Muhammad Ali, Ali uh, Muhammad uh, Ali, uh, uh, Malcolm uh, X, was it? Sam Cooke. Fr uh, and you Fr were saying yeah. that alone, the power <laughs> of uh, a musician's voice, an artist's voice, it made me think about um, when Malcolm was talking to Sam Cooke and he did change gonna come. So right. Yeah. And, 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 and the, crazy, the crazy part about it too is like uh, uh, what a lot of people don't know it's like I, I'm finna check people's like you know um, age real quick right <laughs> because everybody remember New York on the cover right 
But K one twelve has a song on 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 that soundtrack. After the love is gone. After the love is gone. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 And they and, and Slam, he was on that. He was on that shit again. You know what? Let's let's give let's give a uh, big shout out to the originals. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. It was crazy because Matume was actually in the studio when we recorded the when we recorded it. They wanted to see it. <laughs> like. Now wow. you talking about intimidating. You you want to go back to intimidating? You had a two million there. He's like, yeah, you better sing my song the right way. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've been there before. You talking about? Like, you been there before? Mess this up, bro. Like you've been there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Big and straight, big and straight, Prince. I'll never forget that song the same ever again just because of this moment. You like? <laughs> I can I can help myself. They, they. I, I'm like, man, my brother already had did it straight. But what do you want from us? Okay, right, exactly. We did it the way I wanted to do it. They, they, then, but they, they encouraged Slam. They were like, Slam, go in there and do your thing, whatever. Yeah. And we were like, okay, cool. Oh, you yeah. know? <laughs> But the first part, oh, they wanted that thing straight. They wanted it the way that they wanted it, and we're like, "Yes, sir, yes, sir, no problem." So, so, um, so, 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 one twelve forever is out. Um, what is uh, you guys actually have created? Uh, it's, it's a legacy, um, and and we wanted to definitely just say thank you so much for the uh, the music then and the music now. And you know, they, I mean, we, I could say thank you a thousand ways from Saturday, but it it, it just doesn't sum up you guys' um, legacy. Like it, it really doesn't. Um, <clears throat> so again, I can say I want to say thank you because, like I said, my kids are here due to the fact. You got <laughs> children. You got children. Yeah, my children. <laughs> my children. My children is here. <laughs> my children is here. We we, yeah. we we interviewed Darren Henson. He was like, "They're not kids. They're children." I was like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. <laughs> 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 So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, y'all. And, and and please, um, as soon as as soon as um this world opens back up like the way it's supposed to, you guys are always welcome at a seat here at Florida Radio. We are black owned, so we we don't have to wait on nobody. Nice, nice. nice. That's, that's the wife. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing? I'm great. How are you guys? Good, good. Blessed, highly favored. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank so, you. Uh, so what I want to say is, uh, if you guys can be so kind um, to get us, give us a drop for our station. So basically, what this is, you're just gonna say, "Hey, how you doing? We're Mike, we're One Twelve, we're Mike and Slim. However you want to do it, and just say we're vibing with Fluent Radio, where all things are fluent." Okay, we're vibing with Fluent Radio, where all things are fluent. Yes, sir. Okay, ready? Yep. Okay. okay. What up, y'all? This is Mike and Slim, 112 ATL's finest, and you're vibing with Fluent Radio, where all things are fluent. 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 That, that, <laughs> now, but, yeah, yeah, he's trying to add Yeah, you see it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got one last question. I'll leave y'all on, I promise. Okay. Mike, you, you correct Slim a lot on his country accent, right? Uh-huh. I heard it. You can't hide it. <laughs> oh, I'm, listen, listen. I yeah. am proud of something. Yeah. Like I'm a proud of now, now when I'm singing, so fast, when I'm, I heard all of that. Listen, when I'm singing, you can't hear that come. You can't hear that. Dur, 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 dur. <laughs> when I speak, I am one of the countryest dudes on earth, oh, and I'm proud. Yes, of yes. ATL shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout <laughs> it feels really good to be on uh, a conversation with people. I don't have to squirk my words a little bit, tweak them a little bit. You gotta just, you gotta be you. You gotta be you, man. Just speak yeah. it. Yeah. One, one, one more thing, and then we'll let y'all go. Okay, so like, can we get a little sum before y'all get out of here? Um. Baby, I'm so tired of the way you turn my words into deception and lies. Mm -hmm. No misunderstanding. You understand me when I try to speak my mind. I'm only saying, but saying it. Oh, 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 oh,
because we have a magazine you definitely guys got to be in it hey man thank y'all so very much we had a great time please go out and support this new ep 112 yeah. forever slim and mike uh you can find it you can find a, a hard copy uh oh on a bean at 112forever.com that's 112forever.com uh and also follow us on instagram and twitter and facebook on the official 112 yes Thank y'all so much, man. Appreciate you guys. Be safe. And we definitely going to be chatting with you guys soon. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. That was dope. That was really dope. I had a motorbike. I'm sorry. You I can't tell you all. I think we would have been all right, y'all. Hey, y'all, we uh, we gonna get out of here because we got another interview right after this. Thank y'all so much for tuning in Fluent Radio. I am your host, Mr. Fluent, and this, uh, Mr. Fluent himself is my lovely host, Shantae McKinney, and we will be right back, y'all. Peace. Hey. Oh my God. That was